an anthology of readings of Almighty God's words. God Himself, the Unique, 8. God is the source of life for all things, 2. The daily food and drink God prepares for mankind. We had just spoken about a part of the overall environment, that is, the conditions necessary to human survival God prepared for mankind since He created the world. We just spoke about five things, and these five things are the overall environment. What we are going to talk about next is closely related to every human's life in the flesh. It is a necessary condition that corresponds more to and is more in line with a person's life in the flesh. This thing is food. God created man and placed him in a suitable living environment. Afterward, man needed food and water. Man had such a need, so God made such preparations for man. Therefore, you can see that each step of God's work and each thing He does is not just empty words, but is actually being carried out. Is food something people cannot be without in their daily lives? Yes. yes. Is food more important than air? They are equally important. They are equally important. They are both conditions and things necessary for mankind's survival and preserving the continuation of human life. Is air more important or is water more important? Is temperature more important or is food more important? They are all important. People cannot choose because they can't be without any of them. This is a real problem, not something you can choose. You don't know, but God knows. When you see these things, you will feel, I can't be without food. But if you were put there right after you had just been created, would you know that you need food? You wouldn't know, but God does. It is only when you become hungry and see that there are fruits on the trees and grains on the ground for you to eat that you realize, oh, I need food. It is only when you are thirsty and want to drink water that you realize, I need water. Where can I find water? You see a water spring before you, so you drink from it. You say, this drink tastes very good. What is it? It is water, and it was prepared for man by God. As for food, it doesn't matter if you eat three meals a day, two meals a day, or even more than that. In short, food is something humans cannot be without in their daily lives. It is one of the things necessary for maintaining the normal survival of the human body. So where does food mainly come from? First, it comes from the soil. Soil was first prepared for mankind by God. Soil is suitable for the survival of various plants, not just for trees or grass. God prepared for mankind seeds for all kinds of grains and various foods, as well as suitable soil and land for people to plant, thus giving them food. What kinds of foods are there? You should be clear on this. First, there are various types of grains. What is included in grains? Wheat, foxtail millet, proso millet, rice, the ones that come with hulls. Cereal crops are also separated into many different varieties. There are many types of cereal crops from the south to the north, such as barley, wheat, oats, and buckwheat. 
Different species are suited to being grown in different regions. There are also various kinds of rice. The South has its own varieties of rice, which are longer and suited to people from the South because they are not too sticky. As the climate is hotter in the South, they have to eat varieties such as indica rice. It cannot be too sticky or else they won't be able to eat it and they'll lose their appetites. The rice eaten by people in the North is stickier. As the North is always colder, they have to eat stickier rice. In addition, there are various kinds of beans. These are grown above the ground. There are also those grown below the ground, such as potatoes, sweet potatoes, taro, and many more. Potatoes grow in the north. The quality of potatoes in the north is very good. When people do not have grains to eat, potatoes can be a staple of their diet so they can maintain three meals a day. Potatoes can also be a food supply. Sweet potatoes aren't as good as potatoes in terms of quality, but can still be used by people as a food to maintain their three meals a day. When grains are not yet available, people can use sweet potatoes to fill their stomachs. Taro can be used in the same way. These are the various grains, a necessity for people's daily food and drink. People use various grains to make noodles, steamed buns, rice, and rice noodles. People also eat potatoes and use potatoes and sweet potatoes to make staple foods. Taro, which is often eaten by people in the South, can also be a staple food. God has bestowed these various kinds of grains upon mankind in abundance. Why are there so many varieties? God's intentions can be found therein. On the one hand, it is to suit the different soils and climates in the north, south, east, and west. On the other hand, the various components and contents of these grains accord with the various components and contents of the human body. People can only maintain the various nutrients and components required for their bodies by eating these grains. Even though northern food and southern food are different, they have much more similarities than differences. These foods can all satisfy the normal needs of the human body and can maintain the normal survival of the human body. So the reason why the species produced in various areas are very plentiful is that the human body needs what is supplied by such foods. They need what is supplied by the various foods grown from the soil to maintain the normal survival of the human body and achieve a normal human life. In short, God was very considerate to mankind. The various foods God bestowed upon people are not dull. They are very comprehensive. If people want to eat cereals, they can eat cereals. Some might say, I don't like eating noodles. I want to eat rice. And they can eat rice. There are all kinds of rice. Long rice, short rice, and they can all satisfy people's tastes, right? Therefore, if people eat these grains, as long as they are not too picky or fussy with their food, they won't lack nutrition and are guaranteed to live healthily until an old age. That was the original idea God had in mind when he bestowed food upon mankind. The human body cannot be without these things. Is that not reality? Yes. yes. Mankind cannot resolve these real problems, but God had already prepared and thought it through. 
God had things prepared for mankind long ago and prepared them in abundance. That is a fact. God has given mankind more than just these. There are also vegetables. When you eat rice, if rice is all you eat, you might lack nutrition. If you then stir-fry a couple of small dishes or mix up a salad to go with the meal, then the vitamins in the vegetables and various trace elements or other nutrients will be able to supply the needs of the human body in a very normal way. When people are not eating main meals, they can also have some fruit, right? Sometimes, when people need more fluids or other nutrients or different flavors, there are also vegetables and fruits to supply them. As the soils and climates in the north, south, east, and west are different, they also have different varieties of vegetables and fruits. Since the climate in the south is too hot, the majority of fruits and vegetables are of the cool type that can balance the cold and heat in people's bodies when they eat them. On the other hand, there are fewer varieties of vegetables and fruits in the north, but still enough for the people of the north to enjoy. Isn't that right? Yes. yes. However, Due to societal developments in recent years, due to the so-called social advancements, as well as improvements in transport and communications connecting the North and South and East and West, people in the North are also able to eat some fruits, local specialties, or vegetables from the South, even all year round. That way, even though people are able to satisfy their appetites and material desires, their bodies are unwittingly subjected to different levels of harm. This is because among the food God prepared for mankind, there are foods and fruits and vegetables suitable for people in the South, as well as foods and fruits and vegetables suitable for people in the North. That is, if you were born in the South, eating things from the South is very suitable for you. God prepared these foods and fruits and vegetables because the South has a particular climate. The North has food that is needed for the bodies of people in the North. But because people have gluttonous appetites, they have been unwittingly swept up in the tide of societal developments making them unwittingly violate such laws. Even though people feel their lives are now better, such a societal advancement brings a hidden harm to more people's bodies. This is not what God wants to see and was not what God originally intended when he brought all things and these foods, fruits, and vegetables to mankind. This was completely caused by mankind violating the laws of nature and carrying out scientific developments and has nothing to do with God. What God bestowed upon mankind is rich and plentiful, with each place having their own local specialties. For instance, some places are rich in red dates commonly known as jujubes, while others are rich in walnuts, peanuts, or other various kinds of nuts. These material things all supply nutrients needed by the human body. But God supplies mankind with things according to the season and time, and also bestows the right quantity at the right time. Mankind covets physical enjoyment and is gluttonous, making it easy to violate and damage the normal laws of human growth from when he created mankind. As an example, let's look at cherries, which everyone should know about, right? 
When is cherry season? June. They are harvested around June. Under normal circumstances, when will they run out? August. People start eating them from the time they become available, from June until August, a period of two months. Cherries are only fresh for two months, but through scientific methods, people are now able to extend that to 12 months, to even next year's cherry season. That means there are cherries all year round. Is this phenomenon normal? No. no. Then when is the best season to eat cherries? It's the period from June to August. Beyond this limit, no matter how fresh you keep them, they don't taste the same, nor are they what the human body needs. Once its expiration date has passed, no matter what chemical things you use, you will not be able to get it to the way it is when grown naturally. Plus, the harm that chemicals bring to humans is something no one can do anything to eliminate or change. Understand? What does the current market economy bring to people? People's lives seem to be better. Transport in all directions has become really convenient, and people can eat all kinds of fruits in any of the four seasons of the year. People in the North are often able to eat bananas and any food, local specialty, or fruit from the South. But this is not the life God wants to give mankind. This was brought on by mankind's scientific developments. What this market economy has brought to the human body is a violation of the normal laws of natural growth. What it has brought is harm and disaster, not happiness. Understand? Yes. yes. Take a look. Are grapes sold all four seasons of the year in the market? Yes. yes. Grapes actually only stay fresh for a very short period of time after they are picked. If you keep them until the next June, can they still be called grapes? Can you call them garbage? They not only no longer have the original composition of grapes, but they also have more chemicals on them. After a year, they are not only not fresh, their nutrients are also long gone. When people eat grapes, they feel so happy, so pleasant. Would we have been able to eat grapes during this season 30 years ago? You couldn't eat it even if you wanted to. How great life is now! Is this really happiness? If you are interested, you can go study grapes that have been preserved by chemicals and see just what their composition is and if this composition can bring any benefits to humans. Think back to the Age of Law, when the Israelites were on the road after leaving Egypt, God gave them quail and manna. Did God allow people to preserve them? No. Some people were narrow-minded and were afraid that there wouldn't be more the next day, so they kept some aside. Save it in case we need it later. Then what happened? By the next day, it had become rotten. God did not let them leave any behind as backup because God had made some preparations which ensured that they would not starve. But people didn't have that confidence and always wanted to leave some aside because they thought God's actions are unreliable. You can't see it and you cannot touch it. It's still better to leave some aside for later. Have to be preemptive, because no one will look after you if you don't figure out a way yourself. As you can see, mankind does not have that confidence, nor do they have true faith in God. 
they're always leaving some aside for later and are never able to see all the care and thought behind what God prepared for mankind. They're just always unable to feel it, always mistrusting God, always thinking God's actions are unreliable. Who knows if God will give it to mankind or when he will give it. If I'm really hungry and God doesn't give it, then won't I starve? Won't I lack nutrition? See how tiny man's confidence is. Grains, fruits, and vegetables, and all types of nuts are all vegetarian foods. Even though they are vegetarian foods, they have sufficient nutrients to satisfy the needs of the human body. However, God did not say, giving these to mankind is enough. Mankind can just eat these things. God did not stop there and instead prepared things that taste even more delicious for mankind. What are these things? It's the various kinds of meat and fish you want to see on your dining tables and eat every day. There are so many kinds of meat and fish. Fish all live in the water. The texture of their meat is different to that of meat grown on the land and they can provide different nutrients to mankind. The properties of fish can also adjust the cold and heat in human bodies, so they are extremely beneficial to mankind. But what tastes good cannot be overindulged. It's still the same saying, God bestows upon mankind the right quantity at the right time, so that people can normally and properly enjoy these things in accordance with the season and time. What does poultry include? Chicken, quail, pigeon, etc. Many people also eat duck and goose. Though God made preparations, for God's chosen people, God still had requirements and had set a certain range in the age of law. Now this range is based on individual taste and personal understanding. These various kinds of meat provide the human body with different nutrients, which can replenish protein and iron, enrich the blood, strengthen muscles and bones, and provide more energy. Regardless of what methods people use to cook and eat them, in short, these things can, on the one hand, help people improve flavors and appetites, and on the other, satisfy their stomachs. The most important thing is that they can supply the human body with their daily nutritional needs. These are the considerations God had when he prepared food for mankind. There are vegetarian foods as well as meats. Isn't that rich and plentiful? Yes. yes. But people should understand what God's original intentions were when God prepared all foods for mankind. Was it to let mankind greedily enjoy these material foods? What if people become indulged in the satisfaction of their material appetites? Wouldn't they become overnourished? Wouldn't overnourishment bring all sorts of ailments to the human body? It is certainly not good to betray the laws of nature created by God, which is why God apportions the right quantity at the right time and lets people enjoy different foods in accordance with different time periods and seasons. That's the best way. For example, after living through a very hot summer, people will accumulate quite a bit of heat, pathogenic dryness, and dampness in their bodies. When autumn arrives, a lot of fruits will ripen, and when people eat some fruits, their dampness will be removed. At the same time, cattle and sheep will have grown robust, 
so people should eat some meat as nourishment. After eating various kinds of meat, people's bodies will have energy and the heat to help them withstand the cold of the winter, and as a result, they will be able to get through the winter peacefully. What time to prepare what things for mankind, and what time to let what things grow, bear fruit, and ripen, all of this is controlled by God and was already arranged by God long ago, and very measuredly. It's just that mankind does not understand God's will. This is the topic about how God prepared the food necessary for man's daily living. Apart from all kinds of foods, God also supplies mankind with sources of water. People have to drink some water after eating, is just eating fruit enough? People won't be able to stand only eating fruit. And besides, there is no fruit in some seasons. So how can mankind's water problem be resolved? By God preparing many water sources above the ground and below the ground, including lakes, rivers, and springs. These sources of water can be drunk from in situations where there isn't any contamination or human processing or damage. In regard to the sources of food for the lives of mankind's physical bodies, God has made very precise, very accurate, and very suitable preparations so that people's lives are rich and plentiful and not lacking in anything. This is something people can feel and see. Additionally, among all things, whether it is animals, plants, or all kinds of grass, God also created some plants that are necessary to resolve harm or illness to the human body. What do you do, for instance, if you get burned? Can you wash it with water? Can you just find a piece of cloth somewhere and wrap it up? It might fill up with pus or get infected that way. What do you do, for instance, if you get scalded accidentally by a flame or by hot water? Can you flush it with water? For instance, if you get a fever, catch a cold, suffer an injury from physical work, a stomach ailment from eating the wrong thing, or develop certain diseases due to living habits or emotional issues, such as vascular diseases, psychological conditions, or diseases of the internal organs. There are corresponding plants to cure all of these. There are plants that improve blood circulation to remove stagnation, relieve pain, staunch bleeding, provide anesthesia, help people recover normal skin, eliminate blood stasis in the body, and eliminate toxins from the body. In short, they can all be used in daily life. They are of use to people and have been prepared by God for the human body in case of need. Some of these were allowed by God to be inadvertently discovered by man, while others were discovered from certain special phenomena or by certain people prepared by God. Following their discovery, mankind would pass them down, and then many people would know about them. This way, God's creation of these plants has value and meaning. In short, these things are all from God and were prepared and planted when He created a living environment for mankind. All of these things are very necessary. Doesn't it show that when God created the heavens and earth and all things, His considerations were better thought out than those of mankind? When you see all that God has done, are you able to feel God's practical side? God worked in secret. When man had not yet come into this world, 
before coming into touch with this mankind, God had already created all of this. Everything he did was for the sake of mankind, for the sake of their survival, and for the consideration of mankind's existence, so that mankind can live in this rich and plentiful material world God prepared for them, and so that they can live happily, not having to worry about food or clothes, and not lacking in anything. Mankind continues to reproduce and survive in such an environment, 